Hello and welcome to this weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Greek. And today I want to talk about a dissertation, a dissertation written by a student under my supervision, a Korean student, Han Byul Kang. This is his dissertation. And the title of it is Three Nuances of the Perfect Indicative in the Greek New Testament. Now, I'm pleased to report that uh, Dr. Kong has... Uh, has lined up for this to be published. It's been accepted for publication, I think, by Wipfenstock. So I don't know if the title will change any. I don't know for sure when it's going to come out. Um, but I really like this study. What, what he's done is he's taken the insights of Rutger Allan. It looks like Rutger Allen, but he's Dutch. I think he pronounces it Rutger Allan. And you can read for example, a summary of his insights in the Greek verb revisited. There's a delightful chapter in that book, the Greek verb revisited by Rutger Alan, and he does a diachronic analysis of the perfect. And if I could just, in my own words, say it's, it sort of looks like the perfect, like a snowball rolling down through the history of Greek. And it begins with a, uh, a really strong a resultative stative meaning. And as it continues rolling through history, it picks up this ongoing relevance for the literary discourse meaning. And as it keeps going, it sort of crashes uh, second, third, fourth century AD, and it, it, it begins to overlap completely with the Ariston meaning, and then it drops out of usage. So at the time of the New Testament, really the perfect can have three different nuances depending on the context. And and Dr. Kong, he analyzed all, all the perfects in the New Testament, and he concluded about 55% of them are resultative stative. There's a past event that's completed, and there's this resulting state. We, that's the way we normally think about the perfect, is a resulting state. But about 35% deal with the ongoing relevance of the completed action for the discourse unit. It's it's similar, but it's it's different. It's 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 this is done and now it's important at this point in the discussion because it relates to to the point I'm going to make next. There's a again an ongoing literary relevance. And I think that um, he makes a very good case, building again on the work of Rutger Alan, that this is a, a common use of the perfect, again, 35% in the New Testament. And if, if you don't take that into account, you're going to misunderstand or just sort of squash um, some of the potential nuance. And then there's 10, 11% of the perfects in the New Testament that are indistinguishable from the aorist. And, and all scholars agree that by the fourth century AD or so, the perfect and the aorist were, were interchangeable. The perfect was used interchangeably with the aorist, and that's why it dropped out of usage. And uh, but, but still, even in the Koine period, even in the New Testament writings, I think he makes a good case that 10 to 11 percent of the, the uh, perfects in the New Testament are indistinguishable from the aorist in meaning. So um, I, I hope that that little summary is helpful for you, and you might want to look for Dr. Kong's work when it becomes available as a published monograph with Wipfenstock. Let me mention that Dr. Kong is our host for the Daily Dose of Greek in the Korean language, ddgkorea.com, ddgkorea.com. And if you could help us uh, help people find that, if you know Koreans or uh, connected with the Korean community, if you can help people find that ministry, we'd appreciate it.